What would you think if in The Wizard of Oz, Dorothy, who got these magnificent magical ruby slippers, just got bored with them? I was like, yeah, I don't know. They're not what I expected. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Scott Out with Bill Whittle and Stephen Green. This episode of Right Angles brought to you by the members of BillWhittle.com and the ruby slippers are actually smartphones. This magnificent device that brings the universe to your to your hand, to the palm of your hand. Uh, there's a story now in the, uh, I believe it's a British paper, because the British papers do the all the interesting things, um, where they talk about how Generation Z, this is people born between 1998 and 2010, are actually suffering a great deal of boredom with their smart devices. And so a lot of times when you see young people kind of scrolling through, it's not because because they're so absolutely captivated with the precious, it's actually <laughs> that they are, they're bored and they just keep going and they don't know what else to do with it. Now, I didn't bring up this topic so that we could bash young people because as fun as that can be for people of a certain age, I, what, easy too. The, what I really brought it up for is because I think I must be an honorary member of Generation Z. I find myself doing the same thing. I mean, Stephen Green, I've got this magic in, in the palm of my hand. I can go anywhere, do anything, learn anything. This is probably the defining piece of hardware of our generation, of our era. Yeah. And for some reason, we have not even scratched the surface of that which it is capable of, of which is... And so, <laughs> I, I, I really tr tried to follow that sentence. I tried Scott. not I to dangle my, my preposition, but I got all prepos preposed in it. Um, so, uh, what is it about humanity, Steve, that that gives where we can take something so beautiful, so fantastic, so uh, unimaginably capable, and actually kind of get bored with it all? Wow! Uh, if I can misquote the the narrator from Fight Club. On a long enough timeline, everything becomes blasé. Hmm. Everything. You know, my first computer, this is how old I am, was a Commodore VIC-20. It had Ooh. 4K of memory. Its screen resolution and, and color palette were, were too small even to display one of the icons that make up the home screen of your Android or device or your iPhone. Really primitive. And I paid $99 for it used. And the, the, the real key, I think what kept us interested in computers as a kid is there wasn't an internet. The computer could only do the things that you showed it how to do or the software that you loaded into it. You did not have the entire world at your fingertips. And when we first started getting that in the 90s, it was, it, it, it was a revelation. It was amazing. The idea, uh, flash forward 10 or 15 years later, of being able to put the whole world, essentially, in your front pants pocket is, is more amazing still. And yet, I am the father of two Gen Zs. That's why I asked you what the, what the age cohort was, the Gen Z. He said it was from 98 to 2010. My boys were born in 2005 and 2010. So one's right in the middle, and the other is uh, right on the, the tail end of Gen Z. And they always get our uh, our hand-me-down iPhones and iPads after, you know, my wife and I decide to upgrade. They get our old stuff. And here are my boys with the entire world at their fingertips, literally. And I have to tell them constantly after every question, boys, you have the Internet at your fingertips. Go to it. And as a dad, it... it, it you're, you're filled with pride when you watch them actually do these things, but it's frustrating to, to have to prompt them. And I will wager, I will wager that my pride and my frustration are as old as fatherhood itself. There's, uh, I'm afraid there's nothing new under the sun on this one, Scott. Well, Bill Whittle, um, just to sort of paraphrase and segue from Stephen Green, is, is that the whole world in your front pants pocket, or are you just happy to be on the information <laughs> superhighway? You know... Um, I have gone uh, from this, and I, and I think our, our viewers may be able to recognize oh, this yeah. of a certain age. I have gone from this to now this shiny, sleek, black thing. Um, and 
I have found the same thing happens over time, that no matter how fantastic it seems at first, we quickly become accustomed to it, as Steve suggested, and we quickly become bored. Now, Bill, the reason why I want to ask you this question is because you have made, probably better than any of the three of us, a concerted effort to reach younger people. Not We're not down into the Generation Z yet for you, but for the most part, you do spend a lot of time trying to connect with high school and college students and really to, to bring them a, a message. How how do you get through to folks who are bored with wizardry? Hmm. Well, there's so much to say. First of all, there's yeah. two things I have to say about your introduction, and they both come from other comics whose names I don't remember. First of all, um, when you talked about the jo Dorothy being bored with her ruby slippers, somebody said, if it had been me, if I had been Dorothy, and after going through this living hell, this woman said you could have gone home the whole time, I would have given her a right cross and I would have just knocked her out <laughs> cold. Uh, that's the first thing. Second thing is a different comedian said, you know, my phone is actually a little used app on my phone, and it's the app I like least on my phone, uh, yeah. the actual phone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I never make calls. No, 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 no. So it's an indication that um, the, I, I want to come back to the board with the wizardry thing, but it's an indication that the entire progressive idea, as if we needed more evidence, isn't true. Because we've constantly been told that education is a problem of access, and if, in, if only people could have access to the internet, you know, then they'd yeah. have the, the, the world's knowledge at their fingertips. And, and when they talk about a, a welfare state, they're saying, well, we don't want these people to stay on it forever. We just want it you know, long enough for them to be able to get a degree in, in whatever it is they want to. Well, you can get a degree in anything online now. You can become a plumber. There's hardly, I don't think there's a, a, a virtually nobody in this country doesn't have some kind of smartphone, if they, if, especially if they want one. So, so the, it, it, it's, it proves the lie that People will better themselves if you simply pay them to do nothing. It's not true. They'll sit around and watch. Look, this show is coming to us because of advances in two different areas. One of them is internet speed and the other one is video card processing power. Video card processing power was driven by computer games. It's the only reason why these cards and this hardware is as fast as it is. Yeah. And the only reason the internet is so fast is because of video streaming, which is mostly porn. I'm, I hate to be the person to break it to you, but that's basically what's driven these two amazing advances. So the question for me in, in terms of board with a wizardry, Scott, is, is when you talk about people scrolling on a, on a smartphone, they're only scrolling through the limits of what they know. And the problem is simply this, people have not been educated well enough to know what questions to ask. I use my iPad almost almost completely to read. Any book I want to see or anybody says something interesting, I just get it, download it, and read it. But for me, the beautiful thing is I could be reading about, you know, Joseph Goebbels or something in his hometown of Raid or whatever it's called, and, and, and I can just stop reading and just touch another button, and now I can go and see the house that he lived in, and I can see where the town is in Germany, and I can, and I can look at I, any little detail that comes up in the read, I can just go and actually experience. But you have to, but you have to want to to do that you have to want to be curious enough to do it and i think the problem is not so much the technology the problem is we have to we have to figure out how we lost the ability to kindle curiosity and i suspect i suspect we have lost curiosity because we have simply nothing we don't reflect on things and we don't imagine things which is what we had to do before the internet if somebody, I remember it was Mad Magazine or something like this. I'll, I'll never forget this as long as I live. They, they, you know when you were a kid, you'd make an airplane, you'd take a, a ballpoint pen, you'd stick a ruler in the clip, and, and then the, the ruler would be the rings and the, and the ballpoint airplane would be the body of the airplane. Yes. I used to do this all the time. And the thing, the detachable nose section. Well, Mad Magazine or something drew up like engineering plans for what this actual real life ship that's composed of a ballpoint pen and, and, and the wings <laughs> would look like. It's just enormous and all these different subsystems and stuff, you know. But when you're stuck with that, you you it, it's like a it's like a muscle that you that you are, are forced to develop. You know, your imagination has to become uh, 
stronger in order to fill in the gaps. That's what reading is, right? I mean, that's what reading is. You, you're basically using your imagination to sketch in a picture. Picture. A picture. <laughs> uh, a, pic a picture. Fetch me that picture. Yeah. And when, you, and when you're given the whole thing on a plate, you're not challenged, and so you don't have the imagination without the imagination. You don't have the curiosity without the curiosity. The phone is just a series of, of games and apps that come out, and people are getting bored with those. But I'm never going to be bored with the Internet. Hey, Bill, you made me think of something. As a uh -oh. uh, first-wave Gen Xer, I am a member of the last part of the last generation for whom the Mad Magazine back cover fold-out was the <laughs> ultimate in interactive media. A fold in. Absolutely. Oh, the fold in. Yes, the fold in. <laughs> That's right. It was great. That was well, brilliant. you know, it, as Bill and Steve were talking, it made me think of, you know, because far be it from me to criticize so-called Generation Z on this topic because I think I am guilty of the same thing and I marvel at it myself. Although I did uh, remember that this week I used this little device to figure out how to change the tensioner pulley and serpentine belt on a 1999 Saturn SL2. And it was a ball. And I took pictures of it as I was going on and then posted like t 10 pictures to my Facebook stream and wrote a little commentary on it. There was a step-by-step -step that would help other people do it theoretically, but really it was just, just a bunch of wisecracks about self, you know, self-deprecating humor about my own mechanical skills. But it was fun. Yesterday, I discovered there's an app that employs uh, some sort of magic, which they called, in high school, they called this trick trigonometry. I knew that it was a black art. And I, so I avoided excelling in that. I would avert my eyes from the trigonometry text at every opportunity. But they use trigonometry so you can actually point your camera at the base of a tree, for example, and it'll tell you how far away the tree is. Then you can point your camera at the top of the tree and it'll tell you how tall the tree is. So from a distance, you and it's a heads up display right on the right on the screen here that will say, okay, that tree is 17.9 feet high and you're you're 38 feet away from it or whatever. And I was like, that is magnificent. That's it, and you know magnificent. But here's the key. It's like walking into a garage filled with the best set of, what do they call them, Matco tools? You know, the guys with the trucks that drive around and sell tools oh, yeah. to professionals. It's like walking into a garage filled with these tools. And, and everybody, at least every red-blooded American boy, would walk around there and pick up the tools and look at them and marvel at them and stuff like that. But there's no car in the garage. There is no purpose for the tool. Having a tool without a purpose is like not having a tool at all. And so then what do you do? Well, you kind of bang the hammer on the side of the toolbox and see if it'll make any noise. <laughs> and then you see, you see if you can use one tool to break another tool or whatever. So you just kind of fiddle around with it and do useless things. And I think that's what happens to us with this technology is that because we don't come first with a purpose and say, I need to solve this. I need to, to uh, surmount this problem. I need to, uh, to conquer this challenge. We just come to it and somebody hands us the toolbox and they go, hey, go ahead, go at it, do something. And so we do something which turns out to be nothing and we're rapidly bored. And so I think the only way out of this, basically, is to find ways to challenge yourself. It's to take the next problem that presents itself in life, the next thing that you gripe about, the next thing that you're upset about, the next thing that you're complaining about to others, the next thing you're posting, frankly, on social media about, where you're unhappy with how it's going, and say, hey, I wonder if I could use this pneumatic wrench to fix that problem. And I think that's the only hope for the future of civilization is that we would have tools with a purpose, not just tools for a purposeless people. For Bill Whittle and Stephen Green, I'm Scott Ott. Thanks to the members at BillWhittle.com for making Right Angle possible. You have a purpose. 